Yo, what's up, Hobby Maniacs? MBG here today with another awesome tutorial for you. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Eldar Hemlock Wraith Fighter slash Crimson Hunter kit. This kit's been getting a lot of play recently because of the new Harlequin book, and it's got that mind, mind lock pod that does some cool psychic abilities. So a lot of people have been picking these up. I put a, a few together for an army here recently, so I'm gonna show you how to put it together. It's a great kit. It goes together very well, but it does have tight tolerances and a lot of parts that uh, you wouldn't really expect to be assembled in the way that they are. There's a lot of inside parts and a lot of stuff on the airframe that actually uh, you leave partially assembled so that you can come in and lock other pieces in with, you know, at, at other points in the assembly process. So it was a really fun uh, kit to put together for me, but I know that a lot of people out there might have a hard time with it. So I had to use rubber bands, I had to use painter's tape, and I had to use plastic glue, and a lot of different things all came together to really produce a quality assembly. So if you're gonna be putting one of these models together, you might wanna check out this video real quick just to get some good ideas and some more hobby tips for you to add to your hobby arsenal. Okay, so first off, grab all your parts. It's about to go down. This is where you wanna make sure you got everything clipped out and all trimmed down, all good to go. So I did a little inventory of both halves of the fuselage. We got a whole bunch of wings and a whole bunch of interior pieces that you're gonna see kind of how they go together here in a second. There's The kit actually has a lot of parts to it, but it's not too complicated once you make the little assemblies and get them all into place because it's, uh, it's kind of a daunting kit, but definitely check the instruction manuals and make sure that you trim down all the little fillets and all the little uh, stubby parts throughout the, the fuselage and the interior parts so you're not um, basically trying to assemble stuff and it, it's not dry fitting correctly. So here's what it's gonna look like all put together. It's got hot swappable uh, weapons so you don't have to magnetize them or anything. So here's the tools that I'm gonna use for this project. We've got painter's tape, seam scraper, and exacto blade because sometimes you just gotta get in there and do the Lord's work. Uh, some clippers and a plastic bristled brush. And what that's gonna do is not mar your surface. Oh, and don't forget the rubber bands because sometimes you just gotta hold stuff in place. Pull all those aside. And now I'm just gonna grab out the first baggie and we're gonna be good to go here. So we've got, I, I like to, once I trim stuff down, I put them in little project baggies, just because I go through them methodically, like trim down all the parts, dump it all out, and just kind of do my thing. So here they are, you got all the wings, just kind of gonna pull those aside. Then you got all the interior pieces, all the wep the hot weapon swaps, you got the, the scythe guns, and then the lances as well. And like I said, those just sock it right into the airframe and then you can kind of pull them out or pop them in. They're very snug, so as long as you assemble everything good, uh, they'll fit right in. For this project, I'm definitely gonna use the plastic glue that you just saw there. Uh, it's, a great, it's great stuff from testers. It basically bonds the stuff together pretty quick right off the bat. You don't have to worry about it. You just wanna get in and make sure you've got a really nice coat, uh, bead of the glue. And you can dab it off with like a paper towel, but a lot of times what I do is by the time that it takes me to scramble and grab the other part, that it's usually pretty tacky by that point and it's good to go. Just kind of uh, glue, uh, just kind of put the part on there and it's good to go. You can also grab a paper towel, like a wet paper towel, if you get a little bit on the exterior of the part, you can just kind of wipe it away and it's not gonna cause any problems before it starts to solidify. If it does solidify, that's okay too. You can just basically scrape it away with a seam scraper or an exacto, but you have to let it dry thoroughly. So that might be like a six to eight hour process. So first off, you're just gonna kind of assemble some of the interior parts. There's a little cockpit assembly. There's some, um, I guess, intake parts, as well as like a jet thruster assembly for the rear. So they're all very easy to assemble in little sub assemblies and then kind of lock in there as well. And you want to make sure that you get some nice beads of glue around the engine uh, the engine area from the intake to that, the actual thrusters. Because what's going to happen is that's how everything kind of locks together. So you want to make sure that the that when you, when you dry fit it and then when you go to glue it, that the parts that you put on the inside haven't adjusted or haven't 
basically aren't sticking out so your your airframe is going to look all wonky because you don't want that at all so make sure that you that you pay particular attention to this this stage of the assembly the thrusters go in the rear the exhaust go in the or the exhaust or the intakes go in the front and they're all you know they're not very similar part wise so you should be able to put it in if it's not the right part you're going to know it so grab the right part and pop it in there here's the middle thruster kind of intake assembly uh, that kind of pops in very easily as well and then there's the the left and right pieces uh, also and there's also a um, I guess like a center intake so you've got like three engines one center one's right one's left and you basically have to have some of them all pretty much the same except for the one in the front is a little bit more complicated because it's got this scoop kind of thing uh, a little reminiscent of the uh, current F-16 Fighting Falcon so it's always cool to see some of that real, real world uh, design coming through in our, our fantasy toy soldiers so if you did everything right the top uh, fuselage will fit right down over top and there won't be any problems looks to be the case here so I'm just gonna put in that last part there that little scoop we were talking about and then glue the top down now the problem you're gonna have at this point is it's not gonna want to stay it's a it's a lot of surface area and it's just not gonna want to stay so what's gonna happen is you're gonna want to use some rubber bands oh and of course you always want to make sure that when you dry fit these things because there's those two little stubs that I messed up on right there that I had to go in and scrape away and then definitely pay particular attention to where I'm putting the glue because that's basically how the top attaches to the bottom the wings don't really offer a whole lot of support uh, between keeping the two halves together they're mostly just for uh, lateral or horizontal support themselves so you're gonna want to make sure that right here at this step that you pay very particular attention now there are going to be some gaps this thing is not uh, it wasn't designed quite as well as someone would like so you're gonna see some gaps up around the front intakes that you're gonna have to use some gap filler and we talk about that in a couple of other videos uh, some Vallejo plastic putty you can definitely get right in there I'll give it you know about six hours to dry and then scrape it away now you notice while I have this uh, starting to make this assembly with the rubber bands that I'm actually going in there and adding some a little bit of extra glue support to try to keep it together. Then I'm going to use some painter's tape because what happens is this uh, airframe is so fragile and it has so many like little fiddly parts that I couldn't get the rubber bands all around where I want it. So I'm using the painter's tape, I'm pulling it tight, I'm making sure that I got a good seam and here you can see there's a big gap right there that I was worried about so I fill that with a little bit of plastic glue to let that dry and I'm going to scrape that down later when it's all dry so right here got a nice good seam to the front intakes I'm gonna add some more tape to the back because I can't really put uh, the problem was when I was putting a rubber band it was torquing the whole assembly so that didn't work so well the same thing happened in the front but I figured out that if I kind of put it at a diagonal it actually holds and there's no no problem there so it keeps the cockpit area together and everything like that now it's time for the wings they're both pretty much symmetrical so I'm just gonna show you the one here you got the little intake well it's not really an intake part I guess it's more of a weapons mount kind of little scoop there so we're gonna pop that in and then there's a little gemstone too that uh, now on this one is gonna be the bottom but on the other wing it's gonna actually appear on the top so just pop those right in good to go and then you move on to the next step which is basically putting the other wing together but I'm just going to show you this wing and we're going to throw it on the um, the fuselage here in a second now I gave this plenty of time to dry because you don't want to you don't want to be messing around with the plastic glue before it's dried because then your parts start shifting and by the time you realize that they've actually dried you've got stuff all like wonky and not lined up right so I try to get as much as much of the sub assembly stuff out of the way like that uh, the rabbit ears part there on the front the front fairing and now we're going to add this uh, basically cap to the back here because normally you put a, um, a little spoiler on the back there but for this particular uh, build we're not going to do that so just uh, bumping that right in there so then it comes time to add the wings and like I said they don't really they're not really for supporting the fuselage they're more of supporting themselves so you're going to see this huge gap at the top and what's going to fit in there is the vertical uh, stabilizer piece so this locks in nice and tight and then you've got this little um, I guess it's about 1 8 inch gap at the top for both sides as you're gonna see right there and then you're gonna add the stabilizer right on top that um, 
you know, you want to make sure that you that you really trim these down, these parts down, because this part right here should line up perfect. But they don't always, because just just the way that these things are designed and the way you put them together, you're going to have a little bit of gap. And that's why you're going to need some gap filler on this model, because I would have one side that needed gap filler and one and the other side that didn't need gap filler, just because just the nuances in assembly and just drying times and things like that. So once you get the vertical stabilizers in, you're just going to want to use some of that painter's tape to lock in the front as well, just to give you that extra support while everything's drying. And I went ahead and put a piece uh, horizontally along the actual aircraft uh, body itself just to try to lock in those uh, those top stabilizers a little bit better so once that's all done just kind of set it aside to dry make sure you get a nice solid bond of course with everything there and it's gonna dry and then you're gonna be good to go you just remove the tape off and if you want to do some uh, some seam filling with that plastic putty it's super easy just uh, pop it in there uh, don't forget the rubber bands because you can put a rubber band across the middle section here uh, laterally that'll give you a little bit extra if you lop it over the, the vertical stabilizer. It'll give you a little bit extra support while this all is drying. So there it is, a uh, super easy assembly. The key here is to make sure that you trim all your parts meticulously so they'll go together well. So that's about it for this one, guys. Make sure you stay in the trenches, subscribe to this YouTube channel, check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com, and check out our new YouTube channel, The Long War. That's where the battle reports live. So we're doing lots of stuff over there, so make sure you check that one out. We're trying to drop uh, some exclusive content from Next Level Painting as well as Spiky Bits over there every week. So don't forget to work out your paint muscles at least 30 minutes a day, and together we can all bring Hobby back. Yo Hobby Maniacs, thanks for checking out my channel. Don't forget, there's tons of other tutorials, unboxings, and tips and tactics videos on here as well. And make sure you visit my best friend Kenny B's fresh hobby channel over on Next Level Painting.